Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do six quick and easy animations. Open up a new project, and we're going to go to Primitives and Cylinder. Go to NB on your keyboard to bring up lines, and we're going to add in a bunch of lines, give this some geometry. Uh, maybe not that much, but somewhere like there. Okay, now go to Bend the Former. That's this little purple icon here. Go to Bend and make this a child of the cylinder. You just drag it right underneath and you can see the arrow. When it's pointed down, it's underneath the object that you're trying to deform. So click on the Bend the Former and we're gonna click Fit to Parent. And we're gonna set this to about 180 degrees. I shouldn't say about. 180 degrees. Return. Now, what you can do is you can grab the bend former and using the transform, or not the transform, the directional tool, you can slide this up and down in order to make this pretty interesting animation. Now, that's cool on its own. But if we put this in a cloner, so go to MoGraph, Cloner, and drag the cylinder as a child of the cloner, we're gonna add this, uh, we're gonna make this into a, a radial, except we want this in the XZ coordinates, and we're just gonna give this a little bit more radius. I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. Now, when we bring down the, the bend the former, we get this pretty interesting animation. In this animation, I'm going to be using the twist deformer. So grab a cube, and I'm going to resize this so it's pretty thin. And I'm going to add in a bunch of segments. So NB on your keyboard to bring up lines. And go into segments and just try to put in an equal amount of segments. So 20, 20, and 3. And we could drop this down a bit so it's pretty even. OK, next. Go to the purple icon and grab twist. And we're going to drag this to it's a child under the cube. Click fit to parent. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the angle when it's in the object tab. And we're going to go to 25 degrees. And make sure you're in your first keyframe. Command click on this button here and go forward uh, a few frames and we're going to go back to the angle and we're going to go negative 25 hit return and then command click to add in another keyframe next I want you to go to the first keyframe that we made click on it to select it command C to copy and we're going to go to roughly the same amount of frames and then command V to make a keyframe. And you can see when I push play, you can see this animation. Next, what I want you to do, go to the animation uh, layout and select all your keyframes. Go to key and right at the bottom, you'll see cycle. Click on cycle and you want to make a bunch of copies. It doesn't matter how much. I chose 10. So 10 copies. And if you push play, you can see the animation cycle through. Cycle is really good when you just want to look at a walk cycle for an animation. It's not something that you want to use other than a sample or an example. Uh, but you can use this and it does help to just kind of visualize how the animation is going to go. So I'm going to press pause, go back to the first keyframe, and I want to go back to the startup layout. And what I want to do is I want to bring down 
the twist so it's at the bottom part of our cube and you can kind of look at this as a as a character as we're gonna try to make it give it a walk cycle so go back to the first frame and press play you can kind of see the motion the back and forth motion of this cube so now I want to animate the motion where the direction of this cube is going to be going. So click on cube, go to coordinates, and we're going to go into the Z axis. So command click, make sure we're in your first keyframe, go all the way to the last frame, you can click this button here, and we can make the object go forward by going into our negative. Command click to make a keyframe. And go back to your first frame. And then you can see our little walk cycle of this character. Might be a little too quick. Or we can add in some more length to our, uh, our keyframe. So let me zoom out a little bit and pan around and let's add in a little bit more length command click to reset our keyframe and let's take a look at our uh, that's pretty good it were just a quick and easy animation something you can apply to pretty much any object that you wanna simulate him actually walking or her and uh, it's just something easy to put into any object that you want to use could be a text, could be a model that you make, it just gives it a quick animation. In this animation, I'm going to be using the Melt Deformer. So go to Primitives and go to Capsule, and B on your keyboard to bring up lines, and in Height Segments, we're going to go 3, Cap Segments 3, and Rotation Segments 8. Go to your Deformer, and go to Melt, and make Melt a child of capsule. Now you can already see the deformation we use 25 percent here for the strength but we're gonna be using noise scale so go to your first frame and choose something like 35 percent and command click this button to make a keyframe go to your last keyframe and bring up the percentage to give a sort of a rippling effect. Command click. And that might be a little too much. Bring that down a bit. Command click. And if I go to the first keyframe and press play, you can see a sort of like a rippling effect. Press pause. And what we can do is we can bring in subdivision surface. You can click this icon here and drag our capsule and our melt to a child of subdivision surface. And what that'll do, that'll smooth out the surface of your, of your geometry. So it gives it a kind of a smoother look. And when we push play, we can see that it's almost like fabric. And something that's kind of interesting is like, when you move the melt, you can see how it sort of gives it this sort of like fabricy kind of effect. We can push up the uh, we can push up the noise scale as well. You can kind of see that it almost looks like fabric. You can use this for also an effect for like water or something melting. In this animation, I'll be using the bulge deformer. Go to Primitives, choose a cone, and then go to Deformers and choose Bulge. Make Bulge a child of the cone. And if you click on Bulge, go to the Object tab and click on Fit to Parent. Next, we're going to go to Strength, and we're going to choose 25%. And Curvature, we're going to choose 880. Now, you'll see that we have sort of this ripple right over here. And what we want to do is, let me just 
go to the side view. What we want to do next is we want to go to our first frame, go to coordinates, and then go to pitch. We're going to command click, set that keyframe, and we're going to go to the last keyframe and choose 360. Hit enter, and then command click to set that keyframe. Now we want, when we push play, we have this sort of undulating animation. And let me click pause for a second. I like the way this looks, but we're seeing a lot of faceting with the geometry. It's getting deformed in such a way that it's starting to lose its, its quality. So we'll go to subdivision surface and we'll drag the cone as a child under subdivision surface. Now when we hit play, we have this smooth ripple effect. It's almost like a walk cycle. In this animation, I'm going to be using the spline wrap deformer. So what I want you to do this time, I want you to go to splines and we're going to choose helix. Let's stretch the helix out by using the height. Just kind of stretch this out about there. Next, what I want to do is I want to bring in a plane. So go to primitives and choose plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a bit, a bit thinner about there. And we're going to choose spline wrap in the deformers. So go to deformers and spline wrap is right here. Drag this to a child of the plane we just made. And in order for this to work, we're going to have to have the spline in this field here. So in this case, we're going to use the helix. You can also use any spline that you want to use. You can use any of these here and you can draw out exactly what you want to draw. But I'm just going to use the helix for an example. So, so when you click spline wrap, you can use this offset to have our path, uh, our plane that we just made, ride along this spline and any spline that you make. So I like the way this looks. The only issue is, is that we have a lot of these uh, hard edges. In order to fix that, we just go to the plane and we just add in more segments. So maybe 40, and that gives us a smoother, uh, smoother animation. You can even go even farther. We can add in, say, 60, and that gives us uh, more of a smoother kind of transition. And uh, experiment with different splines and different objects. In this animation, I'm going to be using the squash and stretch deformer. So first go to primitives and choose a sphere. Go to deformers and choose squash and stretch. And we're going to drag that to a child of the sphere. Now in this uh, squash and stretch object tab, we're going to adjust the factor and a little bit of the expand. Next, go to Type, and we're going to go to Spline. Now, we have this little spline path here. We're going to be adding in points, so Command-Click to add sort of this Bezier point. We can adjust these tangents. And the idea here is we're going to be making sort of a U-shape. So I'm going to Command-Click, make another point, and just drag this something similar experiment you know what what you're trying to accomplish but want to try to make a sort of like a a uh, like a lava lamp effect Okay, now grab the sphere and we're going to make a subdivision surface. 
and we're going to put the sphere as a child of subdivision surface. Next thing I want to do is I want to make a keyframe for bottom. So command click bottom, make a keyframe, and then we're going to go about the midway point, and we're going to bring this out somewhere around here. And now go to the first keyframe, click and copy, Command C on your keyboard, and we're gonna go to the last frame, and we're gonna Command V, paste that in. And you can see here, we have, if I push play, we have a sort of a, uh, a lava light uh, type of effect.